welcome to episode 39 of George's Random Astronomical Object. Every episode, I run a random number generator to select random astronomical coordinates in the sky, and I then search for an astronomical object near those coordinates and talk about what makes the object so interesting to astronomers. So let's run the random number generator. The coordinates for this episode are 16 hours, 42 minutes, 7.8 seconds right ascension, and plus 68 degrees, 56 minutes, 40 seconds declination. These coordinates point to an object in the constellation Draco called 1642 plus 690. This is one of those types of astronomical objects that's identified by its coordinates. The first four digits refer to the right ascension, and the plus sign and the last three digits refer to declination. This object is a quasar, which is a galaxy with an active galactic nucleus, or AGN, that produces huge amounts of radio emission. An AGN consists of a supermassive black hole that is millions of times more massive than the sun, a disk of gas and dust falling into the black hole, and jets of gas that appear above and or below the poles of the black hole. These jets are caused by gas that does not fall all the way into the black hole itself, but instead gets swept away from the black hole towards the poles by very strong magnetic fields. These jets contain lots of ionized gas, which means that they contain a lot of free-floating electrons that tend to oscillate within the really strong magnetic fields found in the jets, and this causes the jets to produce a form of radio wave emission called synchrotron emission. 1642 plus 690 and many other quasars like it are sources of very strong radio wave emission, even though many of them are very far away from the Earth. In the case of 1642 plus 690, we are seeing it when the universe was about 6.7 billion years younger than it is today, although this does not quite translate into a distance of 6.7 billion light years because of various cosmological effects that are a little too complicated for this podcast episode. The radio wave emission from 1642 plus 690 is so strong that advanced radio astronomy techniques can be used to make images of the jet from the AGN on extremely small scales. In the radio images, the core of the AGN looks like a very bright dot, while the jet of gas appears as a stream of fainter blobs to one side of the core. What's really cool is that astronomers have been able to watch the blobs of gas in the jet move over time. It isn't moving so fast that astronomers can see it changing while they're making pictures of it, but it is moving fast enough that if they take a picture and then wait a year and then take another picture, they can see that the blobs of gas in the jet have moved over the course of the past year. What's really freaky, though, is that the blobs of gas in the jet look like they're moving several times faster than the speed of light. That's not possible according to the laws of physics. What's actually happening is that the AGN is forming dilithium crystals that are powering the blobs of gas to warp... No, wait, that's a script for a badly written Star Trek fanfic. What's actually happening is that the blobs of gas are moving at speeds that are a fraction of the speed of light, but because of how we view the jet from Earth, it looks like the jets are moving faster than light. So, I'll explain. First of all, when astronomers make images of 1642 plus 690, it looks like the jet is moving to the side but that's because astronomers are making two-dimensional images of a three-dimensional object. The jet is actually pointed at an angle that is almost but not quite aimed directly at Earth. It just looks like it's moving sideways in astronomical images. The gas in the jet is actually moving quite fast. It's probably moving at close to, but just below the speed of light. To be clear, radio waves and light waves are both forms of electromagnetic radiation that travel at the speed of light, and nothing can travel faster than that. For everything in our everyday lives, the electromagnetic radiation travels much faster than the objects that emit or reflect this radiation, so we can instantaneously tell where something is by looking at the light or radio waves or other forms of electromagnetic radiation from that object. 
In the case of the jet in the Quasar 1642 plus 690, however, the gas is almost keeping up with the radio waves that it is emitting because the gas is traveling at nearly the same speed as the radio waves. So, when a blob of gas is ejected from the AGN at the center of 1642 plus 690, it produces radio waves and then travels right behind those radio waves. As the blob continues to travel away from the galaxy, it emits more radio waves and then it travels right behind those radio waves. What happens on Earth is that the radio waves from when the blob was near the black hole and when the blob was far away from the black hole arrive at nearly the same time, which gives the illusion that the blob is moving sideways at much faster than the speed of light. This phenomenon is called superluminal motion, and when this was first seen in 1642 plus 690 in the 1980s, it was only the ninth quasar where anyone had seen this. Today, it's more common for astronomers to see this effect, but thanks to quasars like 1642 plus 690, they now understand what's going on much better. So... The three major lessons to remember from this podcast episode are that 1642 plus 690 is a quasar that is ejecting a jet of gas that can be seen in radio wave emission, that the jet looks like it's traveling at faster than the speed of light even though it isn't, and it's very likely that multiple people have written some Kirk slash Spock fiction involving active galactic nuclei, including possibly 1642 plus 690. The location on the Earth's surface corresponding to the position of 1642 plus 690 in the sky is on Victoria Island, which is split between the Northwest Territories and Nunavut in Canada. This island has two specific distinctions. First, it's the location of Cambridge Bay, which is the largest stop for passenger ships and research ships traveling through the Northwest Passage. Second, it's the location of the world's largest island in a lake in an island in a lake in an island. The website for this podcast is www.randomastronomicalobject.com. You can visit the website to download episodes of the show, read information about the astronomical objects, view images of those astronomical objects, look up additional reference information, and send me random feedback. You can also find this podcast on Facebook and Twitter, where you can send me links to your favorite Star Trek fanfics involving AGN, as long as they are suitable for a general audience. The audio was recorded and edited by George Bendo. The music is Immersion by Sasha Endy at www.sasha-endy.de, which is distributed by filmmusic.io under a CC 4.0 attribution license. The sound effects are from the Freesound Project at www.freesound.org. Thanks for listening.